In today's video, we're gonna be talking about why I prefer mud motors over other types of boat motors, and we're gonna tell you a little bit about why I started this channel. Send it. If you like John boats, mud motors, and things that make you wanna just yell, yeah, yeah, then you've come to the right place, partner. If this is your first time on the channel, make sure you go right down below here, hit that subscribe button and a little bell thingy right next to it so that you won't miss any of our upcoming videos. So I'll start this out by saying that I have absolutely nothing against outboards. There's nothing wrong with an outboard. It's just that for where I live and the bodies of water that are close to me, I can't get to where I want to go fish and hunt with an outboard because I would absolutely destroy it probably the first trip out. So where I'm at in kind of like east central Georgia area, most of the bodies of water around me are really easily accessible by boats with outboards. And because the fish and the ducks and everything else is so overpressured, I can just about guarantee you that every largemouth bass and every wood duck can tell you what was on sale at Bass Pro Shop last weekend. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't wanna waste all my time trying to fish for really smart fish that are overpressured, and I don't wanna go hunt for ducks that can tell you everything that was in the Cabela's catalog for 2020. I would much rather go find the stupid fish and the not so smart ducks. So in order to do that, I've got to get into some really remote bodies of water, which means I've got to go up some really tight creeks and rivers to get back to where nobody else can get to. Now a jet drive would probably work okay for some of the spots I want to get to, but they just have one major drawback and that's cost. They're insanely expensive. Which brings me to my main reason for liking long tail mud motors is cost. Yep, that's right. Cost is my number one factor when considering what kind of motor I want to put on my boat. And long tail mud motors are cheap because I am not ball and rich like Kid Rock. And with as many boat projects as I've got going on and as many as I have coming up in the future, this is going to be the cheapest option, which is the Thailand style long tail mud motor. Now, with that being said, I have absolutely nothing against American style long tails. Like I would absolutely love to have one. And my birthday's coming up. If anybody wants to get me one, I wear a backwater size 40 horsepower EFI. Thank you. That would be great. But seriously, the American style long tails are really, really good. Like I would absolutely love to have one. They're just expensive. And I get why they're built here in America. They use American made parts. They're usually a lot heavier due to your design. But for where I'm going to go, we don't have a whole lot of like flooded timber and these like long, you know, mud flats like they do out in Texas and Louisiana and these really, really thick swamps. We just have a lot of, you know, like lay down logs and stumps and stuff like that and really shallow water that I can't get through with an outboard or maybe even a jet drive in some cases. So the Thailand style long tails will get me everywhere I need to go for a lot cheaper than an American style mud motor. Now, the next thing I really like about the Thailand style cheaper long tails is the simplicity. There's not a lot of parts. Basically, all the different manufacturers have the same basic kit. It's just designed a little bit different. Some parts are a little beefier on some kits than others. Just really depend on who you go with. But they're very, very simple. It's a lawnmower or pressure washer motor with an adapter and a long shaft sticking out the back of it with a little gimbal bracket and a handle. So for the builds that I have planned for this channel, these are gonna be the easiest for me to adapt to different style motors, which is what I want to do. So not only do I plan on really, really pushing these things to the limits and seeing how far we can get these pressure washer and you know like lawnmower style motors to go, but I also wanna venture into other style of motors like they do over in Thailand. I love watching those drag racers over in Thailand with the crazy motor builds that they come up with. And they're using these real basic kits to adapt to you know, diesel engines, V8 engines, V6 engines, motorcycle engines, just about everything you can think of, they're doing over there. But nobody's doing it here in the US and I don't know why, like it's so much fun. I see a lot of people talking about it and a lot of people wanting to do it. And I've seen a few builds here and there, but nobody really documents it. And nobody really goes out and sees how fast you can make one of these kits go. Now I've owned several of these Thailand style long tail mud motor kits in the past. And I've always really enjoyed them because you can really get in there and tinker with them and make them work for any boat. So you just gotta know what you're doing and have a little bit of knowledge about how to make the adjustments in the correct directions and what parts you need to change out in order to get these to work on any style of John boat. And me being a guy that likes to tinker with stuff, these are perfect for me. So this is a great opportunity for me to tell you guys why I came up with the idea for this channel in the first place. Cause I just kind of came out of nowhere and people were like, oh my God, there's a new John boat channel that's doing crazy mud motor builds. So let me tell you exactly how this all started. So I was browsing around on YouTube one day and over in the little sidebar, I had a suggested video come up. 
and it was a drag racing boat that was over in Thailand with one of these long tail kits on it. I had watched tons of these videos before, but this is one that I hadn't seen. I don't remember the exact video, but it was one of the crazy twin turbo Isuzu motor builds where they were running like almost 100 kilometers an hour. I don't know what that is in America, but it's probably like 60 or 70. It's, it's stupid fast. So later that night, I was in the shower and I was listening to Come Join the Murder, which is like the best Sons of Anarchy song ever, by the way, in case you didn't know. And I had this like overwhelming just feeling. I was like, you need to do this. You need to get on YouTube and you need to do what these guys over in Thailand are doing, but do it here in America. I already have a YouTube channel. My business channel is All Things Fun Hydrographics. That is what I do for a living. And I have to be somewhat professional on my hydrographics channel because that's that's my business is how I make money and how I afford to put food on the table. So I have to act like a responsible adult on that channel. And I enjoy being a YouTuber, so I just wanted something that I enjoyed that I could be myself and just come on here and do things that I really like. But I also wanted it to be something new and unique that people haven't done here in the States, and I thought this would be a great opportunity to do the two together, and this would be my little side project, and I get to build some really, really cool boats in the process. So after doing some thinking for a few weeks. I came up with the name Send It John Boats, and here we are. So for those of you that are following along with the channel, I will give you a little mini itinerary of what I have planned coming up for 2021. First things first, I've got a Gator Glide video coming very soon on Project Bottomland Bateau, our 1648 build. I've already got it all filmed. I just gotta sit down and edit the footage on it. I've also got a trailer video coming because the trailer on that 16 foot boat did not fit that boat at all. So I've gotta like completely redo it. So we're gonna be doing that one next. We're gonna be doing a series of speed testing videos with different size Predator motors and different kits on the 10 foot boat Project Pocket Rocket and the 16 foot boat Project Bottomland Bateau. So we'll have those videos coming out probably in February or March. And I also got in some kits to do an actual brand review on. So there's only a couple of YouTubers that have done some pretty decent reviews on the mud motor kits that are available here in the States. The problem I have with them is they all seem extremely biased towards one company or another. I'm not going to call anybody out or say anybody's name, but it is quite obvious in a lot of them who they got paid by to do the mud motor reviews. I'm not sponsored by any of the mud motor companies and nobody's paying me to do them. So I'm going to do one that's actually legit. The other issue I saw with some of the reviews were they just absolutely trashed some of the company's mud motor kits because they couldn't get them to work on their boat. And it's not because there was anything wrong with the kit. It's because there was something wrong with their brain. And if you can't get a mud motor kit to work on any of the John boats that are available in the US, then you just don't know what you're doing. You need somebody to help guide you along the way. And that's what I'm gonna be here for. And I'm gonna show you what I have to do to get these things to work. They take some tinkering. It's not just a slap it on your boat and run down the river. It's, it's not that easy. It, that's part of these things being cheap is you gotta tinker with them to make them work. And if you're not willing to put in the time and effort to try to figure out how to make them work, then you're gonna have to buy a more expensive kit or find one that just fits your boat miraculously the first time you bolt it on. But while we're out doing the speed testing on these different Predator motors, I'm hoping that at least one of these kits will have an issue on one of those boats to where it doesn't want to work right, and I can actually film like a how-to, this is the steps you need to take to get it to work on your boat, and these are the different things that you can adjust, and this is the way that I have done it in the past to get it to work for me. So I think those videos will be really helpful for people that are having issues, especially with like props popping out of the water or props wanting to dive down in the water. Those are the two that I see the most often and we can work through the adjustments on those and do some DIY videos. And then we've got Project Grave Digger coming up very soon. I've got a hole design for it ready to go. I just gotta get some time to actually build the hole. And then the paint job is Oh my God, the paint job's gonna take forever, but I'm hoping to get to the casket build somewhere around February so that we can go ahead and start playing around with motors and seeing what motor will float on the back of that boat and not make it sink. And then once we figure out what size motor, we can start hopping it up and seeing how fast we can really get it to go. So we'll roll those bloopers here for you in just a second. And I know we talked a lot about money in this episode, so let's always remember, money can't buy happiness, but it can buy you a boat. <laughs> Bye guys. Which brings me to my main reason for liking long tail mud mower. Mowers, long tail mud mowers. No, we're not mowing the, we're not mowing the mud. On several of these Thailand style long kit, long kits, long kits. What in the world? I was drive, I wasn't driving. You can't drive on YouTube. Of these Thailand style long kit. There I go again, long kits.
It's just for where I work. Blah. Several of these Thai long, long tail, long tail, long tail. I'm already starting to talk Thailandese, and I, I just whatever.